18 naked cowboys in the showers at Ram Ranch. Big heart throbbing cocks wanting to be sucked. 18 naked cowboys wanting to be fucked. Cowboys in the showers at Ram Ranch on their knees wanting to suck cowboy cocks. Ram Ranch really rocks. Hot, hard, buff cowboys, their cocks throbbing hard. 18 more wild cowboys out in the yard. Big bulging cocks ever so hard. Orgy in the showers at Ram Ranch. Big hard throbbing cocks. Ram and cowboy butt like a breed of ram wanting to rut. Might actually happen, guys. Am I gonna start a stream without any technical issues? Is this is this even possible? I, I think I think I've done it. I can't even believe it. <laughs> All right, it's it's the blessing of a, a Ram Ranch. You play Ram Ranch, your stream goes fine. That's how it works. So it has been it has been some time since I've dedicated dedicated myself to preparing a stream. Of this of this magnitude about a specific person with preparation and investigation and, and all that good stuff I have the return of the paper it's I it's on a notebook this time I, I typed it and then I printed it but usually I, I, I handwrite them but no not today so this is I'm, I'm debating I'm debating how PC to be here because I am on YouTube and there are rules to YouTube but at the same time, um, it's very difficult and very awkward to call the person that's in the thumbnail, uh, uh, Catherine. Actually, now that I think about it, I've made a mistake. I've made a mistake. Usually, I don't use this background for the person. There we go. Now we're talking. Now everything is set up perfectly. I knew I, I, knew I forgot something. Uh, so there are two fields to the study of... Trans Salamander. I guess Trans Salamander is the easier name to go with. They're, they go by Catherine Gibbs. They have they have a previous name. Uh, Trans Salamander is the online handle, and it it's kind of apropos. I mean, a salamander is a very weird, blobby kind of creature, and but I mean, I guess salamanders can be kind of cute. Gibbs is not cute. There are two studies, two fields of the of the Gibbs. There is the, the study of autism and how someone so completely and totally socially inept uh, can try and reconcile their inadequacies by fitting into society through other ways and trying to make kinship in, in their own weird, perverse ways. And then there is the TERF study, the, the anti-trans radical feminist study about how Gibbs is a poster child for everything negative that you can say about trans people. I guess the only positive, as far as I know, and I, I really hope I didn't miss this in in the days that I've been reading this fucking thread, uh, but I don't think he's ever raped anyone. If he has, it's not come out, and it's not public yet. I'm going to assume in good faith that they're just... They probably can't. I mean, now they definitely can't. I mean, they can't use a penis to rape, but you can you can rape with other, with other tools. Um... But I've not heard of this. So it, basically, they're just a coomer. This is one of the biggest coomers to ever ever be seen. And uh, I have this I have this image prepared. Uh, that is a list of statements by trans activists, and I want you to consider what these people have said, and I want you to think about how many of these boxes trans salamander ticks off just by themselves there are some other people we're going to mention uh briefly you could probably make two streams out of this and if anything happens with the ranch over time i might have to come back and completely uh reproach the the ranch itself as its own thing but for now i'm just kind of lumping it in in part because uh er almost everything we know about trans salamander comes from or about the ranch comes from the the twitter account of this person so there's a sort of information bias here let me read some of these 
uh, and keep in, I want you to keep in mind as the the stream progresses how many of these boxes uh, Trans Salamander is personally ticking off. Uh, while I never really believed the cliche about women being good for only one thing, that sentiment kept creeping into my fantasies. It's called forced feminization, transforming the loss of male privilege into the best fuck ever. It continues, Pornography is what it feels like when you think you have an object, but really the object has you. It is therefore a quintessential expression of femaleness. Getting fucked makes you female because fucked is what a female is. Uh, a trans-identifying academic, Andrea Long Chu, which sounds kind of uh, like a... They don't look Asian, so I'm assuming that Long Chu is some sort of innuendo. In late 2015, uh, Juno Dawson was criticized for authoring a book targeted at children, This Book is Gay, which contained drawings and descriptions of sex acts. A mother who launched an appeal called it pedophile behavior. Dawson came out as a woman around this same time. Women around the world have been treated as sexual objects, yet if sexual... Oh, it's too tiny for me to read. If sexual objectification is so categorically awful, then why do I want it so badly? The idea that being seen as a sex object is universally a bad thing is too simple, like many trends of feminism. From Jacob to Tobia. I think there are a lot of gay men out there who are gay men as a consolation prize because they couldn't be women. That was certainly true of me. From Juno Dawson, a trans-identifying author. Autogenophilia describes the basic structure of all human sexuality. The assimilation of any erotic image is by nature female. To be female is, in every case, to become what someone else wants. At bottom, everyone is a sissy. Again, from Andrea Long Chu. And finally, uh, there is something about being treated like shit by men that feels like affirmation itself. Like a cry of delight from the deepest cavern of my breast. To be the victim of honest, undisguised sexism possesses an exhilarating vitality. From Grace Lavery, a trans-identifying academic. So we have a, a, a spread of, of thoughts that permeate the, the, the trans identity. And trans salamander hits almost all of them. In fact, I have a list of fetishes somewhere down this list that is just a, a thick spread of everything you could possibly fucking imagine. Basically, their entire identity is a fetish, uh, and I will I will detail that in the future. And when I said that they, uh, what we know from him comes from the Twitter timeline, uh, that is because they, since 2009, have made over 200,000 tweets. If you If you link them together, one after the other, it would probably be several books at this point. Their tweets have been protected because so somebody leaked to the thread about... Miss, Miss, Ms. Gibbs that uh, I was going to be doing a stream about them so they took the, the opportunity to close uh, uh, to close their Twitter timeline so I could not look up things that I wanted to see um, okay someone made this video uh, kind of summarizing how Trans Salamander likes to tweet it's a lot of horny posting, and it goes something like this. I missed, I missed the video, so now you're gonna have to listen to it twice. I for, okay, this is the uh, this is the the folly of my my OBS setup, is that I have one for videos and one for the images I've prepared, so I have to switch back and forth. I like the idea of taking all those, like, he's trying to be, like, sexy about it, but it just comes across as agonized pain, which, really, I guess the two are one and the same. It's Ramadan. Oh, don't tell me that. This is, this is completely haram. Uh, now, there is, a, there is some fan art for, for Trans Salamander, in part because... They really don't like it, and this is this is a beautiful image. Uh, it looks, I guess it's, I didn't see the full version. 
maybe that's what a trans salamander looks like. You take it and then you make it trans and then you like splash it between Gibbs and you get this halfway point. But he says, please report this person for either targeted harassment or hate directed against a protected category. Report other people in that thread too. I've seen such hateful bile in my mentions for days now and it needs to fucking stop. Uh, but here we see the duality of trans. Here is a picture of them squishing themselves. They say, goddess, I love my squish. And they grab a roll of fat on their thigh and then say, I hope the Kiwi Farms chuds are obsessed with me, are grossed out by this pic. Y'all's pain sustains me. The o and, but then, after, after tweeting out the squish with utter shamelessness, and there's a lot of shamelessness in here that I can't properly show on YouTube, um, the only way I'm able to function as an extremely minor internet celebrity or hell lolcal if you prefer is by never seeing all the hate. I have thousands of bigots blocked. I've never laid eyes on the Kiwi Farms thread. I can't fucking take it. Don't subject me to any amount of it. I'm fucking livid that people keep sharing this. Both times it's been mutuals. If you actually care about me at all, please have some fucking sympathy. And again, if my actual safety is a concern... Bring it up to the mistress. And then they link to Steampunk, Steampunk Penny, who we will uh, touch on briefly. Am I weird? Would most people enjoy seeing details from a thread with thousands of replies? Thanks for that info. I can't forget now. Making fun of them. Would that not scar more, most people? Can you take a fucking second to have some goddamn perspective? How dare you? How dare you? At least the Kiwi Farm trolls are bigots whose whole thing is harassment. What excuse, what's your excuse if you try to expose me to this toxicity? I didn't say it right. Toxicity. I know it comes from a place of wanting to help, but the reality is you've done the exact opposite of that. I'm sorry, but that's where we're at. So on one hand, I love my squish and I hope this bothers you all. And on the other hand, please don't ever let me know that there are people out there who are bothered by me. Um, now, there isn't any scientific evidence for this, but it'll be pretty apparent as I start showing pictures of other people later in the stream. But there is some hot debate if trans salamander is completely and totally facially blind. It's, it's assumed there's two camps of this. This is a hotly debated part of uh, trans salamander's identity. It's assumed that either A, they are completely and totally facially blind, or B, they're just horny and will say anything to make people feel good. It could be either or. I'm more of the, I, like I believe, is there's a lot of comparison between Gibbs and Christian, which is kind of a quaint. People always try to relate somebody that they're making fun of to Chris, but um, Gibbs is definitely kind of autistic, and facial blindness is a part of that. So, let us, let us begin the actual story, the timeline that I have prepared here. And as with all good internet tragedies, it starts with a single mom. So we take a person like this. This this used to be, this was a man known as Kevin Gibbs. And here we see him in his room of toys. And he has received a new Wii. So we can assume that this was some time ago, like in the early 2010s. And young Kevin Gibbs is overjoyed with, uh, with happiness for this new way. You can see he's putting on a big smile, so everyone knows that he's very happy to have this new toy. Um, but then, but then we took this Kevin Gibbs and we cranked, we cranked the stunning and brave all the way up to 11. And in a very, very short amount of time, this young toy collector became a beautiful woman who now lives on an alpaca farm in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and this, like I mentioned, starts with a, a single mother. This is, again, everything, this is kind of weird. It's kind of a, a weird reflection on how society is and how we're going to look back on people. Everything we know about trans salamander comes from the 201,000 tweets they've made for over 12 years now. So even what we know about their uh, early life comes from tweets. And I don't know how this is going to affect uh, a historical perspective on people living today, that we have to view bits of their history in uh, 250-character blobs. But uh, Catherine is a salazzle, says, and I think that means slut, but weird. 
Uh, there are moments where I'm really sad I didn't get to be a mom, but there are many more where I feel really lucky that I am not. I think I'd make a great mom, but even something simple like, how do I let my children use the internet in 2020, like, at all, sounds like a nightmare. I had pretty much unrestricted access to the early uh, 2000s internet after my dad, the only one proficient with computers in our family, died when I was 13. The stuff I learned was really valuable and formative, but you can't let kids do that anymore, or arguably ever. To be clear, this isn't a kids today use the computer too much, but rather fascism is in every YouTube algorithm and present in the language and culture of every online game with voice chat. So when uh, young Kevin Gibbs was 13, Papa Gibbs died and Gibbs was left to his own devices. And he says very clearly um, in one screenshot, I don't have save for, IB for, for OBS, but he basically says that he was raised by 4chan which is a pretty familiar story and saying things like, I wish I could go back to those uh, girl kissing porn threads on B and tell the, the young boys on those threads that no, that could really be you. That could be you, the, the lesbians kissing. Uh, so this is uh, what happens when you grow up with that direction, I guess. Uh, so after, after he grew up, there's sort of a vague gap. Kevin was 13 grew up and uh, moved in with his brother and fiance, and his fiance became pregnant. There was some speculation in the household that the fiance's baby actually belonged to his brother, and then she had an abortion, and they threw the brother out. Uh, and soon after that, the fiance and Kevin split. Uh, and from there, Trans Salamander met Penny. And this is Penny. Um, also known as, known as uh, Steampunk Penny, Gibbs' current dom, and within, I think, was it two, somewhere around like two years tops, um, Kevin Gibbs began to become Catherine Gibbs, and uh, under the dominant direction of Penny, who... Uh, by according to, I mean, it was consensual, but trans salamander likes us, likes to frame it as like a, a sissy hypnosis, uh, brainwashing force feminization thing. That's that's one of the many fetishes that he has. So, just a little bit more about the trans identity since this kind of comes out of nowhere. Uh, late in life, Kevin just says, I'm a woman now, and I am also in a <laughs> in a relationship with a dominant trans person. Uh, Kevin has, or I guess I can't say Kevin anymore. We've moved past that. Catherine, trans salamander, has a custom-built unified theory of uh, gender. Uh, where one, this is, this, this is me, by the way. This is my analysis of the trans salamander unified system of gender theory. One, women are holes, and all holes are women. Two, Everybody should be trans or forced to be trans. Three, TERFs should be forcibly impregnated by trans people. And four, HRT is magic. So uh, here we have a picture. Me, I'm more kind of unrelated, I think. And Trans Salamander gives a very affirmative. HRT really is magic, heck, with some hearts. Here is the Kevin... Oh, that's transphobic. Let me, let me move that up a little bit. Okay, now it's not transphobic. Um, before, that's what Kevin looked like. And then under the guidance of Penny and two years of HRT, uh, they became Catherine, a beautiful woman who is in every way valid and special. Uh, now, there is more to this. In particular, trans salamander is a human embodiment of cope, seethe, and dilate. In particular, due to something I'll bring up in a second, but this is a really fascinating read on how and why trans women get periods. If you're running on estrogen, your genes tell the hypothalamus to cycle your hormone levels, regardless of if you actually have ovaries. Now, I have this article pulled up. It's quite long. I'll just give you... I'll give, read the first paragraph to, to kind of give us a... 
crash course. Psychodynamic from Curvy and Trans, why trans women can have periods. First, let's get this out of the way. Yes, trans women can have periods. No, we do not menstruate. But if your idea of a period is so narrow as to only include a flow of blood, then you're not living in the 21st century. I'm not going to spend time justifying this. It's been be done better by others. The purpose of this post is to explain the beginnings of how and why I have come to understand them. Disclaimer, I am not a doctor, but being trans necessitates a degree of understanding of human biology and endo endocrinology, and I have made a hobby out of learning as much about endocrinology as I can without med medical school. Wonderful. I'm sure you can imagine how the rest goes. Basically, cope, seethe, and dilute. Um, it continues. To, oh, okay. This is also funny. This, I also need Firefox to explain this in a second. I, I see this tweet, right? And it says, I thought I was so low on spoons today because of depression. And like, sure, maybe. But more to the point, two days late on my estrogen. I feel so much better now. So what they're saying, Catherine is saying, is that if they take HRT, they get spoons. Which was a very confusing statement. And I had to read more. Like in this post, I'm starting to enjoy using Ash's long-range shots. Now, of course, they're trans, so they play Overwatch. This has been an established fact. Cora, no justice, no peace, says, Eeha, I'm telling ya we should team up. My shields with your long range, I can herd people into your crosshairs with charge too. Uh, Catherine says, I want to play together, but spoon's low today. This left me very fucking confused, so I looked it up. And sure enough, this is a thing. Spoon theory. Spoon theory is a metaphor that is used to describe the amount of mental or physical energy a person has available for daily activities and tasks. The theory was developed by Christine Miseranindo as a way to express how it felt to have lupus. She used spoons to provide a visual representation of units of energy that a person might have and how chronic illness forces her plan out versus her forces her to plan out her days and actions in advance so as not to run out of energy or spoons before the end of the day. So I guess being trans is like having lupus, and you have to very, very uh, carefully ration out your energy. Otherwise, you'll be playing uh, Overwatch and, and masturbating, and then you'll just collapse on the floor and have to crawl into bed, and your day is over. Uh, okay. Now, as part of the, the Gibbs universal system of gender theory. Uh, it's very open-minded. Basically, everyone should be trans, regardless of what, for, or how you feel. Um, here, we say, here we see, there is no invalid reason to transition. Literally do it for shits and giggles. Do it because it's your fetish. Do it because it looks fun. The only qualifier should be if you want to do it. That's enough. Because often that's your heart expressing an important need to you. Transitioning is so much like a fetish fic. I love it so much. And thus, we proceed into chapter two. The most important thing about Kevin Gibbs' day-to-day -day existence, uh, their fetishes... Everything about this person's identity, their day, what they think about, what they aspire to be, uh, what they aspire for others to be, involves cooming. Literally. Literally, without any exaggeration, that is the entire fucking life of this person. Uh, for instance, Musk. I used to know before I was a girl, and it just... Oh, okay. Responding to a message saying, can girls please confirm they don't wash their hair every day? If you don't know, if you have long hair, and I've had long hair in the past, you don't want to wash it with chemicals all the time because that will fuck up your hair and it will fuck up your scalp and you'll get dandruff. But Catherine replies, I used to know, I used to before I knew I was a girl and it just about killed my scalp. The difference is not that girls' hair and men's hair are so radically different that you don't have to use shampoo every day. It's that if you have long hair, you have to be careful not to dry out your scalp. I really only need to do it once a month now for the kind of ha hair I have using a shower cap for all the other showers. I don't know. Maybe I swung the other way and now I don't do it enough, lol. My hair looks and feels good, though, so I'm not really worried. Growing up, my mom thought I had dandruff like my dad, but really it was just my dry scalp constantly crumbling due to destroying my hair daily. 
I'd get scabs in my scalp. It was really bad. Funny that it took me realizing I was a girl to course correct. Um, that's quite the realization. So <laughs> it is kind of a joke to say that it's uh, a musk fetish. Um, it's more of just them being really fucking gross, but it, 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 it continues. It's actually extremely hot when people remind me I'm really gay. There's so much power in knowing I'm gay. And also, it's really, really hot. Okay. Uh, pregnancy. Now taking volunteers to knock me up. 28 replies, 117 likes. Listen, if we get enough cum in me, it's bound to do something. Slaps ass. Let's get this bread. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, but this is an in interesting intersection. There is another person out there who is a really, really gross weirdo named Anna Valens. And uh, there is a slight intersection between trans salamander and this other blob of fetishes and chemicals named Anna Valen. Uh, Anna Valens, succubus, verified checkmark. The year is 2028. The United Soviets of America have emerged, run by a group of 12 to 14 trans women who all initiate breeding facilities where we hive fi high five each other while spit roasting cis women. We call it the gender crit wet pussy carousel. Now with less respectability politics. Uh, 102 likes. I think this one actually became really contentious and a lot of people started running articles about this because it's so fucking weird. Uh, but one person who really liked it was, uh, Ms. Gibbs. Consider the Valpac... Oh, wait, this is not in the right position. Ah, hold up, hold up. I have to, I have to feng shui, to feng shui a little bit. Okay, so Anna Valens continues. I walked into therapy compulsing and walked out realizing I'm into mommy dom little girl. So I guess that's where I'm at. No questions asked at this time. Anecdotally, I find it super common among us trans folk. It's really fun and therapeutic kink IMO. Wonderful that you discovered this about yourself. Heart emojis. I think... Ooh, ooh let me hide the screen real quick. I want to make sure that I'm... Opening the right things. Oh, wait, it doesn't work when I do it like this. I thought I had another Anna Valens tweet. That the, they do interact with each other, I promise you. Um, it continues. This is alpaca porn. Consider the Valpaca. This is actually a dick girl. Both are censored. Both the boobs and the penis are censored. But uh, Gibbs the Salazel says, very yes, three heart eye emojis. Now, furry porn is a little bit tame at this point. We've all become accustomed to seeing furry porn and dealing with the existence of furries uh, for longer than we have tr trans people at this point. But it's a good thing that there is no way that this person being sexually attracted to alpacas <laughs> could ever come into play. They've, they're isolated from any kind of animal, so we don't have to worry about it. OV position. This is a weird one. I imagine that not everyone will know what uh, OV positioning is, but let's explain it. Catherine says, last night I had a really weird detailed pregnancy birth dream where I had puppies. That is, I think that they are saying that specifically because I've been told that pregnant women will get birthing kitten dreams, which is very strange, um, and I think they read that and thought, oh, that's really fucking hot, when it's not supposed to be hot. It's just like a thing that happens to women when they're pregnant, and they like cats, I guess. It's the uh, toxoplasmosis, eating away at the brain. <laughs> that feel when you get impregnated by an ovipositor and then have a litter of pups. That's kind of hot, not going to lie. Stuff you with so many eggs. From Haley Adams, XXX. Uh, so if you don't know... Ovipositors are what animals. It's it's the reverse. It's the animals that have a appendage that injects eggs into an animal, which then has sperm packets they don't release. And I think it's squid that do this, or like um, seahorses. It's 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 not a penis. It's an ovipositor. So this is also a weird fetish um, that ties into pregnancy. I guess if you want to fill. Uh, Catherine Gibbs with eggs. Uh, let them know. Now, 
there's one fetish that is so contentious that they have to make a second account for this. You can't just put this on your main because people will look at this and think, what the fuck is this? And then they'll unsubscribe from you. Um, this is Kitty, the diaper slut, which, <laughs> which should be an illegal sentence that puts you in jail. A salamander you might know, 32 more months. Trans, she, her, baby for little, uh, not, not, well, they're, they're only 32 months old, but if you're over eight, under 18, you can't read this timeline. Plural gang, if you're little too, I'll probably follow back. Uh, bottle emoji. Let's see what treasures are on this timeline. Oh, this is the, a, another hint at this fetish, but is that a kink thing? Nah, she's way younger than five. Pretty sure I know a baby when I see one little one, Lamal. So it's not a... Fuck. Don't interrupt my stream with your fucking phone calls. I was talking about the diaper fetishist and that was really interrupted. Um, nah, she's way younger than five. Pretty sure I know a baby when I see one little one, Lamal. So it's not a fetish if they're only five. Obviously, there's no way that that could ever be, that, that could ever happen. Um, this is from Penny, bringing you home. Actually, I don't think that's Penny. I think that icon is Bonnie, who we haven't even talked about yet. But they're bringing you home a present. And then uh, Catherine says, ah, thank you, Mommy. And it's a bag of Beanie Babies, which are worthless now. Here's something that you definitely want to see. Here's Kitty Diaper Slut. Hello, yes, I'd like to follow file a complaint. Someone has clearly peed in this diaper when I wasn't looking. Angry face. Squishy warmness is nice, though. Guess who's being a big girl tonight? And I want to point out that their shirt says, Come on it. And some kind of font. I'm sure that's a parody. Remember, this is an educational stream for the University of Cambridge. Um. Okay, what is this? Much love to, oh, this. Much love to a signed male who makes great comics and doesn't deserve the wave of hate she's getting. Heart emojis. Full Breakfast asks, wait, is this anti-trans hate or a more specific and personal hate? Catherine replies, it's always rooted in anti-trans hate. I need cis people to understand and get over the fact that a lot of trans people are littles, most likely put in part due to childhoods we had robbed from us. I think there's a fair argument to be made that many of the benefits to letting more trans kids transition will be a reduction in the need of this kind of therapy. So, you know, please direct your anger at the right targets. Uh, if you don't know, Assigned Male is the Quebecois trans artist who was caught tracing pictures of real children for ABDL cub porn. Um, and this caused a bit of an uproar and people were upset and saying we should cancel this trans artist. We don't need trans pedophiles uh, in our community. And Catherine Gibbs, to the surprise of absolutely no one, took their side. Though this is also a similar kind of argument. This whole like ABDL is therapy, it's not a fetish. It reminds me of, um, of what, God, what's her face? Pantsu party. How she says that lollycon is therapy. I don't believe that. <laughs> I'm just going to throw my cards on the table. I don't believe that this is fucking therapeutic. I don't see this person. Mean, oh, I say that. I don't see this prescribed by doctors, but give it a few years. I'm sure they'll be describing child porn to people in a sec. Anyways, I'm sure you'll all be glad to know that he also has a humiliation fetish, which means that he could be listening to this and jacking off right now, and we wouldn't know. If, uh, by the way, my DMs are open, uh, Trans Salamander. If you want to let me know if you're masturbating <laughs> to this stream, that would make some great content. Uh, you can say diaper on the internet. It's okay. Stop using euphemisms. You'd be surprised how many people this is subtweeting. Catherine is a salazzle, replies. LOL, fair. Seriously, though, I only kind of avoid diaper talk because I don't want to squick out my followers that aren't into it. I have an exhibition and humiliation kink. It's not about me being too embarrassed, LOL. So there you go. Now this leads us. This leads us to the most, the biggest fetish. To the, to the penultimate fetish. You see, 
You know all these TFT transformation, transformation gender stories comics where the guy gets turned into a girl and instantly becomes a total slut? I'm living the dream, is what I'm saying. So now, if you would like to open your browser, I would like to direct your attention. Enter in this URL. I'll give you all two minutes. It's kiwifarms.net slash attachment slash 194 two one five zero open it up and report back to chat Now you've seen it. <laughs> uh, the there was a word I, for some reason I don't know how I how I forgot this. There was a statement by Kevin Gibbs that simply said, "Am whole," as if to say, "I am but a whole. I am only a whole, and therefore I am a woman." But now this whole that you are seeing has been uh, lovingly referred to as the am hole. I would like to describe what this picture is for those of you who lack the audacity to, to open this file. Um, it is a gunt surround and below that is two thighs on the, on the uh, Adonis belt. If you can call that, that is poorly shaved hair pockmarked with acne and razor burn. And then below that is the is the am hole. Um, you can see the remnants of scrotum on the right and left, which is supposed to be made or making the the outer labia. In the dead center, there is a scar, a scarred hole. There is no clitoris. It does not look like the inner labia. There is no like meat curtain it just looks like a stab wound and you can see that there is a cavity in it and below that is one of the most genuinely <laughs> hilarious looking penises i've ever seen it looks like it's at full chub but it's shaped it's i leg legit it's shaped like big chungus it looks like fucking um big chungus it is like a, a almost like a bowling pin it has the weirdest fucking shape ever um and it's 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 very hazardly positioned near the am hole as if to imply that it intends to penetrate the am hole and that is the state of uh of the am hole of kevin gibbs they they have transformed into a big into it into a woman into a big beautiful woman and now they cannot undo it they have to live with it forever and a lot of their tweeting is centered around living it, living with it forever. Uh, as you know, once you have become a woman, uh, once you have transitioned into the beautiful butterfly you were always meant to be, the only thing you can do from that point onwards is cope, seethe, and dilate. So, the question is, how does a penis become a vagina? Now, you may have heard some rumors about this, but I have a video which I hope will explain it to everyone uh, very succinctly. Now, there was some surgery footage coming up. If you do not want to see surgery footage, I've been binge-watching South Park when that clip came up. While I was studying the Gibbs, I realized this was, a mat this was meant to be. If they can air that on fucking television, I can put that on my YouTube channel. Fuck you. 
Okay. Um, oh, we have another image here. What is this image supposed to be? I forgot. I'm gonna pull it up live. I don't. I don't remember what this image is. It's the same fucking thing. How is it a different URL but the same fucking fuck? It. Uh, okay. So. <laughs> Oh, this is the Amhole tweet. Extra horny today for some reason. Amhole. Truly iconic. Um, okay. They, this is them clarifying, by the way, that they got penal inversion, which is the surgery that we just watched. Um, and this is the Ragrets. Oh, my God. Did you know your badge looks totally different if you hold a mirror up while you're standing versus on your back? Because I had only been checking it out on my back until just now, and I have learned some things. So immediately after surgery, the area that included my clit and urethra were deep within the cavernous slit that was formed due to how the surgery is done and how everything heals. Said slit has gotten a lot more shallow and shorter, but it still looks pretty wrong until now. I have found my normal ass, normal sized urethra. It's a hole just like it should be. I knew that was the case, but it's nice to finally see. Everything just hangs differently while you're standing, and now that the swelling is way down, there's room for stuff to shift a ton. Despite the minor worries I've had with healing so far, seeing my vag in a whole new light and seeing how normal it actually looks is uh, fucking amazing. The separation on my perineum doesn't really seem like it's looking significantly better than it did almost two weeks ago. But then again, the most recent picture I have is from five days ago, so I can't be sure. I just want it to fucking heal enough that I can stop babying it. I want to see progress. I'm taking daily pictures at this point just to see anything. I looked up the picture my doctor took on the 27th. Fun fact, it's even worse than I thought it was. But obviously, not by the doctor's estimation, so that's cool, I guess. But regardless, yeah, I'm healing. It's just at a glacial pace. I thought it was just like, if you imagine a sock sewn inside another sock... The stitches holding the mouths of the sock came undone a bit. Wow. If you imagine a sock sewn inside another sock, the stitches holding the mouths of the socks came undone. That is truly horrific. It wasn't just that. Now imagine the inner sock has a noticeable hole near the mouth of it. I'm just so sick of this separation. Fuck. To any trans femmes who've actually had a vaginoplasty and complications related to stitches dissolving too soon leading to a separation, if you're willing, I'd love to see before and after pics and DMs. Would really make me feel better about my own healing process right now. I actually know a couple people who have said that they had this issue, but I can't bring myself to ask them directly for pictures. I feel like that's a really awkward thing to corner someone with. The... The am hole has healed, as we've seen in the picture, um, but it does not look like a vagu. And more importantly, to the purposes of trans salamander, the the am hole cannot be fucked. This is what it means to be a woman is to be fucked. So. Uh, uh, Trans salamander will never feel like a woman until they can get fucked by the entire football team of the Denver Broncos because they're in, they're in uh, Colorado, funnily enough. Um, now here is them discussing dilation, the favorite thing of poltards everywhere. Okay, yeah, I'm never dilating again without using a vibrator first. This is a huge difference. It's tenderized by my bits perfectly. So they have to like warm it up first so they can dilate without agonizing pain. This is also a very fun thing. Um, there's a, everyone knows that post-op male to female transsexuals are more likely to commit seppuku than uh, pre-op. And the reason for this is that because it is just a fetish, when you snip snip the balls, there are you're, you're neutered you're not as horny anymore so the um desire to masturbate to your new visage decreases and then you're just left with a mutilated body so here is trans salamander discussing the fact that they cannot have an orgasm masturbating with a dick is like taking the elevator you're inevitably going to get to your floor 
Masturbating with a vulva is like taking the stairs. If you don't pace yourself and try to go as fast as an elevator, you'll run out of steam long before you get to your floor. 291 likes. 291 people looked at that and said, yeah, that sounds about right. The, like I can feel the different floors, the tinier orgasms that aren't quite there, and learning that pacing is so vital. Whereas with the previous equipment, what floors? I can get to start I get in to start and get out in or an orgasm. I get in to start and get out at orgasm. Anyway, guess who didn't get to her floor today? Upside down smiley faces. Um and then Aia I think that's supposed to be Anna, but they've accidentally used the Russian letter for I in it. Anna says, is it weird? It is kind of like that for me even beforehand. Nah, HRT can definitely do that. So as we've established, HRT is magic. What's the fucking point of the surgery then? Like if, if you get to have like the sexual experience of a woman just on HRT, then why do you need to cut out whatever? I'm thinking about this way way harder than I guess you you can't get double penetrated then and that's Kevin Gibbs says that's his number one fetish he wants to be fucked in all holes at once and to do that you need to make a third hole you need the am hole to achieve this masturbation with a dick is like booting up a computer masturbating with a vulva is like lighting a fire with two sticks that one got fifty one fifty three legs. The other one got 291. So people like the stairs and elevator analogy more than the fire and six one. And I don't necessarily mean that in the sense that it's too hard. Sometimes coming with my new parts feels almost easy. But there's always an amount of careful babying that needs to be done to get to that orgasm. You can't rush it. Usually what gets me to that last stretch of the marathon that is schlicking is finding that one thing in the smut I was reading watching that is far too damn hot. Why is that one thing in far too damn hot capitalized? That is very strange. That seems like a something that someone writing a note that wants to ask for help would do to like, because you have to check the first letter of each word. Anyways, but the annoying thing is that it's not always obvious what that's going to be. So I assume that they spend like a good chunk, like half their waking hours just masturbating because they, they describe it like they have to spend hours and hours a day to do this now. By the way, all of these findings of mine should be read in the context of one, I've not yet healed enough for penetration Two, not even close to all my nerves have woken up yet. Well, that's a great sign. And uh, I'm pretty sure when those aren't factors anymore, things will change in some way. Well, you're going to be waiting for a while. What I hate is when everything is going to be fine, but then the smut decides to make things weird and not in a good way. Uh, yeah, that sucks. All right. That is... Oh, wait, no. My notes for the NeoVag are so short. How have I I've failed myself? Gosh, it takes so much work to come with a vulva, my brain, pregnancy, me, and this appears to be a dam letting out water, because it's several tons of water a second there. Uh, this is them complaining about their dialer, by the way. <laughs> I forgot about this. I might be struggling with a tight badge, but let me tell you, that's bullshit. That bullshit belief that... Bullshit belief people have that neo-vaginas seal shut if you stop dilating utter nonsense i've had a couple times where i was worried that it was happening at the farthest depth but it's still all there there's this inch of depth way in the back that likes to get really tight and recently i was really worried because it felt like i had completely lost it but after a dilation i checked again and it's still there despite the fact that no dilator can get in there anymore like, my tightness is going to make sex frustrating, no doubt, but my depth isn't going anywhere, at least in my experience. Okay, this is a weird thing that has been pointed out to me, and which I cannot stop noticing now, is that post-op transsexuals will brag about the depthness of the neo-vagina in the same way that regular men will brag about dick size. They'll say, like, I have a 12-inch dick, and then the, the Catherine Gibbs will say, oh, yeah, I got a 12-inch... 12 inch deep neogina. I can take the biggest cocks in there. And like, nobody does that. No woman on the face of the fucking planet has ever talked about the depth of their vagina unless they have that um, disease that makes it too tight. And only then it's like, this is painful and I wish I didn't have this. Not like it's a weird facet of their life. 
Uh, it sounds as though that worst case scenario, you end up with a tight vag that makes sex really hard to impossible. Yeah, that would be the worst fucking case scenario because that's what you get it for. But it's not a wound itching to seal up. That's not how the human body... Then why does it seal up, Kevin? Why, did, why is it that your vagina becomes really fucking shallow as if it's healing itself over time? And th he's talking about like uh, times and spans of days. If he doesn't dilate for a few days at a time, it gets tight again. Just crazy. Abby Schmetterling says, It does get tighter for sure. So after I reached the one dykeation per week for life point, I thought something a bit more fun than the dilators. So I fuck myself at least once and once a week in the absence of someone to do it for me. Smiley face, and this person has chosen to use a hyphen as a nose for their smiley face, meaning that they are a psychopath. Goddess, I wish something like that had any hope of fitting inside me. I have a thin bullet vibrator that fits pretty well, and I can orgasm with it, which rocks, but nothing seems to get me permanently past the barely index finger width. That is crazy. Like, you can't fuck that. This is the, the full-size picture of that person showing off their dilator, by the way, in case you're curious. <sighs> truly, truly awful. Now, remember, Kevin, Catherine Gibbs, or oh, Kevin Gibbs, I guess. Oh, no, he's still Catherine before the surgery. Trans Salamander got this surgery with the intent of becoming the Amhole. So how, what are the stats like? What, what's like the... the uh, report card for 2020. COVID plus my current weird crowded living situation means that I've had sex two times in 2020 and only one of those times was penis and vagina and I was still healing a bit so it was limited by that. I still don't know yet what penis and vagina sex looks like for me at full power. Fingers crossed I just need like a lot of foreplay and I'm fine lol. Seriously, double penetration is my ultimate dream. If I died before doing a successful, after doing a successful double pen penetration sash, I've lived a full life. Uh, but this also comes after this statement, which is kind of uh, weird. Considering the irony that in the fact that if, my, oh God, he used the P word and that's uncomfortable. Uh, considering the irony in the fact that if my vaguma is indeed tight enough for sex, uh, that is just too much of a hassle, I might settle for anal, something that I never did when I had a dick, doing it backwards. I don't believe this person did not do anal. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Oh, and this is a truly horrific one. Uh, nearly six months since my surgery and I've noticed my vag has gone from smelling like generic feminine musk to unmistakably vag scented and let me tell you that's some damn good gender euphoria so we've gone full circle and we're back back to the uh musk fetish where their greasy am hole arouses them for, for whatever fucking reason <laughs> well now this guy has never seen a vagina <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they had a kid. Well, maybe that's why they thought it was the brother's kid. They never had sex. The, the fiance and, and uh, young Kevin Gibbs never had sex. So it's like, how the fuck did you get pregnant? There's only other one other person in this fucking house. Uh, oh well. So now we're on to the the second half. I guess I don't know how long this is going to take. I'm surprised that this has already taken an hour so far. We're making good time. Uh, the, the second leg of this story, something which might become its own stream again, if there's enough of a fucking catastrophe that where I have to make a new stream specifically about this, but it's time to, to take a look at the tranche lovingly called the tranche. It's actually the tenacious unicorn ranch located in the middle. Well, let me bring up the poster first. The Tenacious Unicorn Ranch is a trans haven specifically created to give transgender people a space to thrive. Our journey started in 2018 with five trans women who had a dream and a whole bunch of alpacas. We set out to start producing the best alpaca fiber yarn in Colorado, then use the proceeds to help stabilize struggling trans folks and serve the trans community. We are proudly trans-run and operated a ranch here to stand as a beacon of hope against our erasure. And they proudly stand in the middle of fucking nowhere. 
Um, this is near something called Westcliff, which is apparently between two, it's like in a valley between two mountains, uh, southwest of Colorado Springs. And uh, it's, it's truly just out in the middle of fucking nowhere. The pictures of the mountains are, are really pretty, but that's everywhere in Colorado. Um, and here's the roster. Here's our heroes. Sky, Bonnie, Penny, Jay, and Catherine. So our hero of the night, Ms. Gibbs, is on the far right with the biggest moobs. Um, to their right is Jay, who I don't know, but is wearing a t-shirt that has a gay flag and I believe it says, come and take it. No, it says something else, whatever. And then uh, Penny, who is Catherine's dom, Mommy Dom, and then Bonnie, who is fucking crazy. And I have some special notes just about Bonnie. I don't have too much to say about Penny, but like I said, I'm leaving some space in case we want to come back and, and revisit the ranch at some point in the future, assuming they don't assassinate me. <laughs> uh, and here's a another group photo. Um, Trans Salamander is in the green top. Penny to their left. Bonnie is the, the, the big chungus in the, the fore of the camera. And then there's some poor guy who looks like he's depressed and wants to escape, but he's trapped between two trannies and doesn't know what to do. And then there's three random fucking people in the back. Uh, there is a video that I would like to play for you. This is from PBS, so I'm assuming that it's in public domain. I can fucking play it. I'm going to play it. Anyways, here is them discussing what life on the ranch is like. I knew that for this venture to work, we would need to be tenacious. And I wanted that reminder up front. And then unicorns are awesome. The mental image of tenacious unicorns running around, that is what I want on this earth. Like, that is what we are. When Trump was elected, things started getting dangerous and we started really looking at other options as far as like living goes. And then an opportunity to rent a full on 40 acre ranch came up and it was like, what is the cutest animal that we can make money with still? <laughs> and, and that was of course the almighty alpaca. There's other hay, you know that, right? I heard about him on a Wednesday. Uh, we exchanged DMs. I had a phone call on a Saturday. That Monday, I gave in my two weeks. Yeah. To uh, just go, like, this is right. I have to do it. The world needed it. Having the community and, like, a sense of family once I got here, like, we're, we're all in this together. You know, we're, we're all pulling through. We understand each other try to be understanding about people's limitations, what they can or can't do. You have to work in horrible conditions at inconvenient times of the day. We're not called tenacious for nothing. You need a tenacious core to make this happen, and you gotta be a little freaking magical. Like, yeah, a little like, bit. You gotta just be a little freaking magical. <laughs> We do want to get to the point where like people, trans people can just move up here and just exist. And not just exist, but thrive. We can shut those gates and cis people go away. <laughs> we don't have to worry about it anymore. And that's a big thing. Safety. I just want to pause it for a second. There's a bunch of different flags on the wall. I find these flags in a front to flags everywhere. And security like that is not something trans people are gifted. I was able to spend most of my transition living here, which is yeah. nice. Like, yeah, it's been amazing. Yeah. Right now, with the housing crisis that's going on, with the evictions that are going on, the trans community has been hit. I can't even explain how badly we've been hit. Like, I get three messages a day from new individuals, um, and that hasn't changed. That's been for months now. It's consistently three people a day. Uh, that are not like about to lose homes, are not about to be in danger. They are either approaching the street or on the street and they are in danger. I was furloughed. My parents are very right wing. So that's been a source of uh, issues. Came here like three months ago or so. I literally just 
messaged him on Twitter and was like, can I come visit? And have been here ever since. Literally hasn't yeah. gone home. <laughs> yeah. We're on course now to be completely self-sufficient as a ranch in the next two years. Um, and that's with up to 20 people here. There's a couple of plots of land. That's an important thing. They ha are on track to become self-sufficient. Keep that in mind. That's, the, that's their claim. Uh, in this area of the valley, and we're just going to buy a couple more plots of land. That way we can build everything up to code before we move people on, and we can be ahead of everything going into the expansion. We'll casually stroll outside and just stare at the mountains and go like, how did this happen? Yeah. <laughs> that's the motivation. That's that's why we're tenacious. That's why we're unicorns. Like <laughs> we we do all of that. That is our life now. Like we, we threw ourselves into this hundred percent and we haven't stopped. Like we haven't stopped for a single day and it's been incredibly rewarding. Surrounded by amazing people yeah. 24 hours a day making it happen. <laughs> like that's you can't ask for more. Okay, thank you PBS for that that uh, informative video. You got to get a nice introduction to everyone. You got to hear some voices. You got to hear their plans and aspirations. Um, this is not the the first trans ranch. Even this is um, very similar to what was lovingly referred to as Trun Blinka, the Trans Lifeline Desert Camp. Um, this one has a much better chance at survival. I think Trun Blinka was completely and totally destroyed uh, because it was just <laughs> a couple cargo containers in the desert. Um, this one got some arable land, got some alpacas, uh, pretty pretty mountains to look at. So they and, and more people, more manpower, <laughs> manpower. Uh, so what could possibly go wrong? The answer is everything. Normally, when you want to start something like a farm. What you do is you sit down, you open up Microsoft Word, and you Google or you find a template called business plan. And you sit down and you fill out your business plan and you explain uh, who you are, what money you need, exactly what you intend to spend that money on, what uh, credentials you have to justify the bank giving you this money, when you intend to be profitable, and when you expect to start making enough money to pay back the loan, and when you expect the loan to be paid back. This is uh, typical in capitalism, but uh, because this is the tranche, and the biggest problem to the biggest obstacle to our combating the pandemic is capitalism, things like business plans don't really apply here. So they just fucking wing it. Uh, now, their only source of income for this ranch is alpaca wool. And that is important. Uh, and the house, by the way, that they live in is not connected to the grid. Alpaca mama. This is Bonnie. Bonnie is the fucking crazy one. Uh, which sounds weird to say after I spent uh, an hour talking about trans salamander. But Bonnie is dangerous. Uh, found out our electric system is all kinds of fucked and the current state of everyday life has made me in a very ready to die state of mind. Anxiety Queen Lexi says, Ah oh man, I'm sorry to hear. I've actually been wondering how y'all have been doing with the power problem. Just got a solar guy to come and check it out and he was not impressed. Nothing is to code and the battery bank is to him unsalvageable. Already a three to $5,000 problem until we learn that the wind turbine is probably dead as of several years and our backup generator isn't even wired in. Holy hell, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, we're currently going to try and see if we can't get a couple more hours and days of runtime out of the batteries we have until they can be replaced. So um, that self-sustaining power isn't working out. Probably should have gotten money up front to repair these things if you really wanted to have a wind turbine. But, you know, the, that kind of forward thinking is not uh, necessarily... Uh, a part of their, their collective consciousness. Uh, Aaron says, are you entirely off the grid at this place? Yep. Only lines out here that I can see are telephone. I guess they use their cell phone for shit posting on Twitter. And aw shit, shouldn't this kind of stuff have come up before closing? We got an inspector, but it was the same guy that shittily installed it to begin with, and we never got a proper report from him, just in all is good. So the state of the ranch is... A group of almost 100 alpacas, 
in a shitty barn, which I will show in a second. Um, and it is completely off the grid and left to the devices of these crazy people. Uh, so, money, by the way. Here we have, I liked, I showed you before, young Kevin Gibbs with his we making a big smile. Uh, much older Catherine Gibbs is still a bit of a consumer. They love dinosaurs and they love toys and they especially very ironically love Transformer dolls, uh, which is not a joke. I thought that was a joke at first, but it's not. They actually collect Transformers. And they will buy $1,000 Unicron collectible edition toys from decades ago and just keep them, I guess. I hate to ask, but, but, okay, left side, I bought a few essentials today, pictures of toys. Right side, I hate to ask, but I need about $182 for bills. Anything you can give helps, but retweeting helps too, truly. Thank you, heart emojis. The MoCash app DM for PayPal address, heart emojis. Yep, going to have to get me one of these. Look at that adorable headmaster. And then there's some Unicron shit down there. Uh, toys. So ridiculous to get mad at me for buying toys and sharing pics of them while also sometimes doing fundraisers for the ranch. When, if you really think it's self-evident that I'm scamming people, no one's going to donate, huh? By your logic, I'm fucking myself over, so what's the issue? I guess it's because you think you're privy to some special understanding of the situation that no one else can see. You know, maybe Occam's Razor that shit. So, food, $200. Data, $150. Alpacas, $800. Toys, $3,600. Uh... Fixing the solar array, $150. Someone who's good at the economy, please help me budget this. My family is dying. <laughs> Spend less on toys. No. Uh, and I think uh, Gibbs explains further this economic inquiry. I contribute $1,000 a month towards the tranche. About $100 a month towards the Patreons of friends and loved ones, all of them trans, Another $100 a month towards the OnlyFans of friends and loved ones, all of them trans as well. Always make sure to support your friends and loved ones through their OnlyFans account. I share and signal boost every fundraiser I see. I often spend some of the small remainder of my money on toys because they make me happy. I don't quite understand the logic of those implying I'm hurting the ranch or scamming people by doing so. I'm sharing this because a former mutual got pretty pissed that I pre-ordered a toy while also asking for help for the ranch and other tweets. When it's losers from a stalking website, it doesn't bother me, but I admit it gets under my skin when it's a former friend. This is the first time I've given details about my finances because it's not my fu no one's fucking business, but I'm sharing this now to illustrate that you cannot. So as you can see, when a bunch of transgender people open a ranch together uh, without the faintest fucking idea of how to finance a ranch. Uh, it can lead to some, some catastrophe. And I'm a huge enjoyer of catastrophe um, when it impacts people who are assholes or weirdos and they deserve it. But unfortunately, tethered, ch chained to the fates of these, of these desperados out in the middle of fucking nowhere are 96 alpacas. So we bring us to chapter two of the second half, the animal welfare group. And uh, this is probably, it, there's nothing, oh, well, it, I want to say there's nothing too bad, but it is kind of bad, kind of oogly. Um, if you're a big animal person, you're probably going to get angry. Uh, but we, we kind of have to talk about it, so full steam ahead, I guess. Uh, we finished extending the mama's barn today. Smiley blushing face. Yeah, teamwork. So we have a rape and murder torture dungeon here. Um, it appears to be a collection of particle board hammered together with nails and uh, straw is laying all over the ground. Um, there is no like insulation. There doesn't seem to... I guess you can't put a heater in there because uh, it's fucking particle board board and hay and that would pose a danger you probably can't even run a heater in there because the fucking power doesn't connect to it at all 
So it's literally uh, just a wood shack with glass panels, and uh, it looks like the roof is even open. I see a fucking light shining in from the ceiling. So uh, probably a decent barn, someplace warm. Unfortunately, uh, Colorado is not particularly warm. Um, so let's watch some videos uh, that have uh, brought some concern to the animal lovers of the forum, uh, the, the farmers of the forum. Oops, 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 oops. Gotta switch back for this. Come on, girls. So this is a different shed. Uh, it's kind of aluminum. It looks like a like a storage shed. Which it look literally looks like a two car aluminum garage. And there's uh, 96 alpacas in there. They're kind of leading out. Uh, alpaca. I just want to say alpacas are the fucking cutest things I have ever seen. Look at those things. How do they have such bright shiny eyes and such cute faces? This is unfair. Babies. Alpaca wits. <laughs> Real talk, alpacas are nasty animals. You, sir, are a nasty animal. I see your fucking anime avatar. Fuck off. These things are cute. That one looks like it has an eye infection. Yeah. That one looks like it was laying on the ground because it's so crowded in there. Uh, this was linked to me. As, as a result of discussion about this topic, which I'll show it now. Uh, this is an article from Whitney Farm, and it says, in regards to alpacas, compared to many farm animals, alpacas are very easy to care for. Typically, day-to-day -day care depends on the seasons as well as the facility. Ideally, alpacas would have adequate grazing area so that for six months out of the year, they would not need hay or grain. As many as six alpacas can be stained on an acre, sustained on an acre of good quality pasture. As we are still developing our pasture areas, we need to provide hay year-round. Alpacas eat 1.8% of their body weight and dry matter per day. Um, this is actually barns. Okay, this is it. Um, in general, alpacas do not need a fancy barn, so you, you could theoretically put them in a shed, I guess. But it says here that it is recommended that each alpaca have eight square feet. So that is, if you are a European, eight square feet is about um, 1.2 meters squared. So they need at least a meter each. That's their personal space. We go back to here and we're just going to take a look at the... Um, I need a good pic. Actually, you know what? There's another video that I can show you that shows us a little bit better. And this is alpacas too. So here's a close up. Um, these alpacas clearly do not have a, a square meter to them. Oh, that fucking thing in the front is so cute, and it looks so thin. I don't know. I don't know. Like, look at how um, uh, narrow it is at the hips. I don't know if that's normal because I'm not like an alpaca expert. I do know that thing is fucking cute as shit, and it's looking right at me. Um, and it does not have a meter to move around in. Someone says very thin. Uh, so you need a six, 768 square foot garage. That's definitely not what we're looking at in, um, in this. You can see it's fine. Yeah. So, so there's something else about this video. Oh, um, actually, you know what? Let me pull up a picture of this real quick. I don't, I, I, I kind of want to demonstrate this, but I need, I need a little help from an alpaca to prove my point. So here is a random picture I downloaded off the internet. This is uh, some alpacas in the snow. Alpacas are very fucking wooly, right? And they're they're they are capable of withstanding the cold. However, they require something called wool to do that. And if you look at the video, you'll notice that these are all freshly shorn alpacas. So if you want to have your alpacas survive the winter, you probably shouldn't shear them, but there's a there's a, a catch twenty two here. The tranche has one line of profit. It sells alpaca wool. So if you want to have money, you have to shear your alpacas. Unfortunately, the alpacas need that wool to not freeze to death. 
Um, and ironically, there there is some tweets on the show that kind of hint that the the alpacas are suffering due to the the weather. Um, but uh, ironically, the fact that they don't have adequate space and the shed is probably helping them survive because they can uh, get next to each other and warm each other up even when it's really fucking cold out in the middle of Car- uh, Colorado. Boys, come at it. Hi. Hi. We'll go, friends. I didn't even see the goats. That's a lot of fucking alpacas. Uh, they are separated. Someone asked, are they boys or girls? And the answer is that they are separated. But um, I have a point about that in a second. Uh, they also have chickens. You saw goats there. And uh, there's some issues with all these animals. Um, make sure I'm not... Okay. That is awesome. Just an endless line of alpacas. I can't believe you folks have so many. 96, I believe, is the current count, so probably about 48 on each side of that fence. Uh, You've got a mighty herd. They're adorable, and it looks like you're set up well for the winter. We're so happy to get this place. We lost a couple to the cold last year, crying emoji. That's horrible. Poor little Pacas. I hope they all make it through this year. Shouldn't be an issue, though we do still have an older lady we're keeping an eye on. A loss like that is expected, but I hope your elder Packer... Elder Paca has a few more years left in her. Uh, also related to this issue of freezing temperatures with no electricity to warm anybody. Anarcho J. Bean, and I guess J is, or jo- Josie is the J from the barn. I believe it is. The chickens have been living in our feed shack instead of the coop. They are totally fine with it, um, but if they lay eggs, they are frozen in the morning. Uh... Ideas for a cheap little insulated nook for them? Until the greenhouse is set up, they're living in the sheep run. First thought is cardboard boxes stuffed with newspaper and stuff, but that doesn't seem like enough for this weather. So the eggs are frozen solid when they get them, and they're just like, eh, what can you do? I guess we should get a cardboard box with some fucking newspaper in it. Uh, now here's the, the less funny uh, side of this. You may not know this about alpacas. And there's something you need to know about alpacas, uh, particularly with how they how they copulate, how they have alpaca sex. Alpacas and llamas have a hard cartilaginous tip to their penis, a penis that actually penetrates into the uterus during uh, during coitus. During intercourse, the corkscrew penis rakes the lining of the tract, opening it to infection. If a female alpaca is pregnant, penile penetration into the uterus can cause her to abort. Photographs of the female reproductive tract taken after breeding show that it looks like a raw hamburger. Females often bleed even after a single planned breeding. In other species, the penis is shorter, softer, and does not damage the female. Well, thank God for that. Um, Now, I've heard that... I've heard Trans Salamander talk about the bleeding of post coitus llamas uh, and how how it reminds him of transitioning, I think. But the more imminent risk here is that you can't, they have to be separated. Because if alpacas have sex all the time, the female alpacas have vaginal prolapse, which is perhaps the most disgusting word in the English language. Um... Josie Bean once again reports, Why did nobody tell me that vaginal prolapse is a common problem during lambing? How is the unprolapsing going? Do you just kind of hose it off and give them a little pack back in there? So you just, I guess you just like, you wash the blood off and then you just like shove it back in there. Shove it back in there. 
She will likely need basically an anti-prolapse diaper harness. Wonderful. Do you just kind of put a thong on it then? Like a sexy sheep? <laughs> or a spoon, apparently. What? I've done some vet medicine stuff, but apparently missed or blocked this part out of my head completely. That shit looks like a gi giant farm IUD. It's really all just very lovely. Farming is wild. Just kind of stuff the pink sock back in. You might have to lube up your fingers a little. <laughs> Thank you, Paul, with the Hebrew name. So there is an issue, or there was an issue on the tranche of their alpacas fucking until the vaginas of the, uh, the female alpacas look like hamburger and they have vaginal prolapse. Um, now this, <laughs> this uh, received some attention uh, from, well, the, the tranche did, from the National Farmers Union. Now, the National Farmers Union is probably a union of farmers. They got a verified blue check mark, so they must be important. Many people think rural America is overwhelmingly white, straight, and conservative. In reality, it's actually fairly diverse. Just ask the transgender alpaca ranchers behind Tenacious Unicorn Ranch. We belong here. Queers are reclaiming country spaces. And then there's a picture of Bonnie petting their dogs. While holding a, a big ass fucking gun. Uh, and then Purple Gator, not to be confused with Gamer Gator, says, Thank you for bringing this animal neglect to a more public domain. These poor things don't seem to have enough space or feeders for their hay. And their incriminating pr videos, previously commented by others, pre being deleted by one of the owners, just makes things look more suspicious. So, <clears throat> Purple Gator, not to be confused with Gamer Gator, uh, who is a furry by the look of their display picture took a look at this and said, uh, these alpacas don't have enough space or heaters or hay, uh, or, or specifically feeders for the hay to keep the hay clean of fecal matter and pee pee. When, cause when you're packed into alpaca wits, you're probably gonna have to pee pee on the hay that's below you. Um, now I don't think this led anywhere because as you'll see, the replies from Tenacious Unicorn Ranch say, our animals get top-notch care, verifiable top-notch care. Actually, as y'all called the sheriff's department, they came out while we were hosting a news crew. So we have them dropping the case on film. Y'all don't know shit about caring for animals. Uh, Bonnie, the crazy person says they are literally laying in hay. Which, as I've explained, uh, the difference is, is that the hay on the ground was covered in poo-poo and pee-pee, which alpacas do not eat, usually. <laughs> um, and Boneless Gender Bucket says, Lol, we have the local sheriff on film saying they look great. Uh, so take that, bigots. We can run alpaca wits however we want. And to be fair, it is very, very hard in the United States to get an animal taken away from an owner. Uh, there has to be serious, obvious neglect. Things being run, you know, less than ideal is is not because like what what's going to happen to the animals if they get taken? They usually get put down. They're not going to be redistributed or whatever because it just doesn't happen that way. So I know a lot of people when animals get brought up on the forum and they think that the animals deserve better, they get really um, reasonably upset, uh, understandably upset, and they want something done, but. Like, it, 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 like, you can't say to the police, hey, you guys should take Amberlynn's dog because she's 600 pounds, and if she sits on that shitty little dog, she's going to crush it. That's not justifiable reason to take someone's animal. Um, so chances are, unless, like, animals seriously start fucking do dropping in this ranch, they're not going to do anything. Uh, just just so you know, not, not trying to get anyone's hopes up. Um, it is sad um that because it is a, it's a matter of pride what they're trying to say is that we are trans and we can be alpaca ranchers we can be farmers we can reclaim farming for uh queer people and we don't need a business plan we don't need electricity we don't need fucking anything we can just take a plot of land in the middle of fucking nowhere and make it work and there's nothing you can do about it and they're going to let that point of pride uh dictate the Ongoing management of the farm. So, sorry, alpacas, you're all very cute, but uh, God, God has God spites you with cruelty. Josh, like thirty died in the winter. Really? They said only a couple. I didn't see thirty. That's really fucking sad. 
Maybe they should find some way to warm the alpacas up by letting them grow their fucking hair out. That would be a good start. Um, maybe put a roof on your barn. <laughs> that would also help. Okay, now the less important aspect of the tranche is the human welfare. How are people doing on the tranche? Now, I wanna, I, I've been kind of hyping this up, but we're going to meet Bonnie here. How it, but specifically, how is Ms. Gibbs doing? Catherine says, I can't fucking live here anymore. I have no space. I have no money. I can't fucking breathe. Metaphorically, not like in the George Floyd way. I love my polycule, so I can't leave, but I fucking hate it here so fucking much. I can't do anything. I've been suffocating for eight goddamn months. My computer won't turn on. I mean, it will. But it, like, doesn't do anything except be on. Like, nothing else happens. No boot up, nothing. I can't afford a new computer, God damn it. And then in response to this, I need this roommate to find another place to live as it's destroying everyone's mental health, but they're convinced, but they're convinced there's no one for their, nowhere for them to go. And maybe they're right, but it's still fucking untenable. Now, I have a, a sneaking suspicion that this tweet that you're looking at right here, which is very recent, it's only January, um, is about Bonnie because Bonnie, this is Bonnie, by the way. I don't know what it is about trannies, trans, 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 trans people of color, um, letting their gunt hang out. Anna Valens does it too. It's very weird and not very flattering. Um, but this person is literally former U S military. God bless our troops. Thank you for fighting for our freedom in Iraq and Afghanistan and dying for Israel. Uh, but I think that they're crazy and I base this on the fact that, uh, well, I think that they own the property. Their mother owns the property. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's Bonnie. Bonnie's mom owns the property and lets them live there. Um, their former service member, they have two children as many trans people do. And I would like to read you something. Um, and switch over to Firefox real quick. Parts of me, the not-so-glam reality that is Penelope's transition. Oh, Penelope. Did I mix Bonnie and Penelope? That would be embarrassing. Steampunk Penelope. Oh, this is Gibbs Dom. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> I guess I should have read the title of the article before associating it with Bonnie. Uh, so Bonnie is the service member. They were in Germany, but there's a very specific part that I want to read. Six years after I stepped off the plane at DIA, a free woman, I was more damaged when I left, which is saying Alat. All connections with my soul was gone. PTSD made every day a walking nightmare. I was in every single way a walking shell of a person. I found work and walled myself away from everyone. I had one sexual encounter during my time in the military, and directly after, this resulted in my second son, who brought me out of my haze, but moved away shortly after his birth. He was assigned female at birth, but at four began his transition. In him, I would see the growth of time. He will never suffer like me, not for one day. He will be disallowed, not for one day will he be disallowed himself or made to feel like the odd man out. I am so very, very proud of him. I wandered aimlessly until this damn burst five years later. So Penelope, the the mommy dom, uh, who is now the mistress of Catherine Gibbs, had a four-year-old daughter who they groomed into being a female to male. He continues, I quit my job. Public interaction was just too much. I went to school and became a broker, then recused myself to my home. Me and my sister bought a duplex together. I traded all day and shrank into the void. Eventually, even that was too much, and I sought help from a psychiatrist. I will end this segment here right before I became healthy again, <laughs> right before it all turned around. But be sure to keep an eye out for the final chapter of the trilogy of my transition. Love to all of you. I hate ending on a sad note. This is me as a child helping to build my grandparents' home. Uh, so that was Penelope. Uh, I thought that was Bonnie. I don't know why. I guess because Bonnie's the one that loves the gun so much. They always have one around. 
Uh, but this, for sure, is Bonnie. Um, this is an interesting story by itself. Bonnie says, still holding out hope that my dad dies. This will be my first purchase. And it's a picture of a truck. Because I guess they don't have any fucking vehicles for their farm either. <laughs> that would go on the business plan, by the way. We need a vehicle loan. Um, this is a picture of Bonnie's dad. The person that they want to die. You might be thinking, oh, that's sad. That Bonnie wants their dad to die. Let me shrink this so I can put them side by side. So you can see the resemblance. Which there is. Which is shocking. Um... Because the dad is kind of weird looking. You might be thinking, that's really sad that Bonnie wants their dad to die. Well, don't feel too bad, my friends. Uh, because Bonnie is a convicted sex offender for having repeated sexual encounters with a seven-year-old that they were not a stranger to. Uh, they were put on the sex offender list in New York. And then they had a stroke. And you might be thinking, wow, a transgender person whose father was a sex offender? This is shocking. Um, I've never even heard of that before. But Bonnie says, as I wait to find out if my father suffered a stroke, I'm left to ruminate on the man he was. He is someone I reluctantly call a bad man. I always feared the details of his crime. I never ended up calling him because I couldn't let him destroy what good I still thought of him. He taught me a lot growing up. Always encouraging my creativity. He is the, absolutely the reason I am a maker. He listened to me and really tried to understand me. Through the trans stuff was hard. He may have taken my mom's side a lot and hit me on occasion, but I could forgive him for that. Unlike my mom, he never tried to manipulate and control me. He wanted me to be happy doing what made me happy. But I could never forgive him for what he did to my brother's family. I am so grateful I wasn't born a girl. I can accept his death, but I will miss who he was. My mentor, my savior, my inspiration, my dad. And if you're wondering, Bonnie did not get a dad, not get a truck from the dad dying because I think they spent all the money. <laughs> oh, uh, let me retract. I see a comment. Um, I did not mean to call Bonnie the sex offender. It is Bonnie's dad who is the sex offender. Just to clarify. I retract that statement. I have no evidence that Bonnie's dad is a sex offender. Now, I called Bonnie crazy, um, however, because as you can imagine, or at least how I imagine, Bonnie has constructed a situation where to keep people complacent as the number two in the household, uh, everyone must live in fear all the time. Because as you can imagine, everything in the tranche was fine until... The vile forces of darkness arrived, and the tranche has been under siege ever since. So let's read some tweets from the Tenacious Ranch. Their stated goal is to burn us out of the valley. Intimidation is part of that, along with other tactics. We've won. We won't be we won't be giving We won't be giving I though and they are starting, we won't be giving up though, and they are starting to get pissed because of it. They have already entered the property, armed at night, so it's far beyond mild fear tactics. They've been putting this out there for months, that the, the vile forces of darkness, um, the fascist of Colorado, have been invading their property at night with weapons to try and intimidate them. There have been no police reports, no footage of this whatsoever. Which I guess makes sense because they don't have any electricity, so how could they record it? They can't really put up a, a fucking Amazon doorbell and show the fascist waving the, uh, the, the swastika flag outside their home and threatening them because they don't have any power. It continues. Bonnie says, The local militia is super cowardly but very dangerous, usually avoiding direct confrontation and working in the dark. They're over... They've overinflated tires. I guess like the tires of that truck that they never got. Burned down houses when occupants are on vacation, etc. But we're way over prepared to let them pull that shit on. So you, the local Nazi militia of Colorado does two things predominantly. It will put too much air in your tire to cause it to pop on the road. And it will burn down your fucking house. <laughs> That's a bit of a discrepancy. Um... But it continues. The militias out here found out we are a hard target. Next, we'll make every leftist, we'll get to the liberals later, out here a hard target. So they're, Bonnie's helping everyone by spreading fear about this militia that apparently exists. Um, 
And this is this is Penelope. This is uh, the mommy dom saying, "If I die here, and listen, I won't die easy. But if I do, it will be defending who and what I love. I've made my peace, and will gladly bleed to move the line forward and show that bullies will not rule the day." Talk about change is always easier than creating it. Both are necessary. This reads like a fucking free France like diary, but there's no evidence that this has ever happened. Bonnie makes tw- uh, tweets like this saying, had a car stopped in, fr- uh, in front of our neighbors for a bit. And as soon as I had my scope targeted for a peak, they peeled off. Les Cliff, get a handle on your fascist. So people are like visiting their neighbors. Like, Hey neighbor, I brought you some, some eggs and some alpaca wool. And they're like, oh, thanks, neighbor. And they look over and they see like the glint of the sniper rifle in the far off Troon Ranch. And like, oh, gotta go, friends. See you next time. And then they leave because this fucking retard is pointing a gun at them. Which I, I don't know. This seems like an admission of a crime. You're pointing a loaded weapon at someone's car for doing nothing but visiting their neighbor. Um, was it a red car? <laughs> now. Uh, there is some doubt. There is some doubt. Is there any understanding of who the fascist groups harassing them? Names, websites they frequent, not the Kiwi Farms. Uh, have you all considered going to the media about this? I know that would run the risk of drawing more attention from the wrong people, but it also might scare away your harassers. If they think the spotlight may fall on them, that is assuming any media cares. It seems like they're trying to bait you into defending yourself with force to excuse escalation on their part. Can you reach out to any animal rights group near you? Anyone who can offer assistance? What a horrid situation. You must be so terrified for the animals. They are so sweet and innocent. How about the local newspaper? Any you, Could you get, gain support through ads expressing need for help? Now keep in mind, uh, there's a tweet that I don't have clipped, but keep in mind that... Um, they said that the local sheriff went to their house while they were filming a uh, a news story. And the sheriff said, your alpacas look fine. There's nothing to do here. Bye-bye. And they left. Uh, but Bonnie says that there is no way for them to contact the media or the police about the fascists trying to kill them, burn down their house, and overinflate their tires. Uh, while they have both the media and the police visiting their fucking house with no incident. So I don't know why they're doing it, except for the fact that they might get a lot of GoFundMe donations to help fight fascism with no evidence of that fascism existing because they don't make any fucking money off their alpaca wools because their alpacas are fucking dying of, of the cold. That could be it. Uh, now, there is two more people to talk about on the ranch, and that will be a wrap. So let me flip back to Firefox because I have some stories for y'all. So this is a person named Grace, and the story comes from June of last year. Grace says, Ask me about how they would make a disabled person work long hours in the field, then shame her for being in bed with severe back pain the next day. Or how they locked a queer woman out of the ranch with a shoot-on-sight order when she had to go to the psych ward for a mental breakdown. Um, Let's see. Is that just... Oh, here we go. Oh, this is uh, comments. These people are promoting it. The uh, Benjamin, what the fuck kind of name is that? Benjamin Shredanga. That's an awful name. He should change his name to something less stupid. But Grace replies to Benjamin saying that you should check out this trans ranch by saying, "Oh, neat. I was told my family and I could go there when we were facing houselessness like three times, and each time we were suddenly told, actually, no, never mind. Good luck. You're on your own." My favorite was, yes, you and Finney and Rihanna can come here. And then two months later, nah, three people are too many. Good luck, though. It's cool to have housing stability dangled in front of your face just to have it yanked away as, as you get close with an oops, too slow. Benjamin Sridankukau says, sorry to hear that. And Grace replies, ask me about how they would make a disabled person. Oh, that's the same thing. I'm not going to ask you twice. This is also interesting. Grace continues, I got violated while high at the Tenacious Unicorn Ranch, and the only thing that it got me was kicked off the project for being too depressing. 
As recently as a few months ago, I had housing stability for me, Finney, and Raina promised to me on the ranch just have to contact Flake constantly, just to have my contact Flake constantly every time I have questions, only to come back and tell me actually three people is too many. The alpacas were straight up starving to death for a while. One of our last housemates moved in with us at the behest of her friends because the place was using and abusing her. They locked a queer woman out of the property with a shoot on site order because she had a huge mental breakdown and had to go to the psych ward. They put a disabled woman, blah, blah, blah. Um, maybe you should give your money to indigenous projects instead of funding yet another white colonist settler utopian thing on stolen land. Anyway, I'm sure I'm going to get yelled at for this, but at this point, I don't give a fuck. I'm tired and getting yanked around by so-called friends who play with my hopes of, you know, not dying in the streets. So that is one, uh, wonderful testimony. I think these are the same tweets. Now there is one other person. Uh, this person does not yet have a place on the ranch. But they are preparing to move there um, as soon as they can. But there is one condition. There, there's one thing they have to do before they can move out to Colorado and enjoy tranquility. And that is get out of prison. So here I would like to meet, or for you all to meet, uh, Christina Alicia Lynch. Christina is an incarcerated trans sibling that needs our love and support. Please give money to fund her surgical or to her surgical fund if you can afford to. And if you can't give right now, please retweet so that someone with the money to give right now might see this. <clears throat> and this is actually them. I do not know how they are tweeting from prison. Uh, I believe that there is a system of butt phones that they're using to stay engaged with the internet because being terminally online at this point cannot be abated even in jail. So they say from prison, from the bottom of my purple heart, thank you so much to the trans sisters and extraordinary others who have shown their love and support by contributing to my sex chain surgery GoFundMe. It means more to me than I can say thank you. And this is the picture of them in prison which is very impressive. They're actually doing a selfie in what looks like a solitary confinement cell. So that butt phone is getting its fucking money's worth. A uh, thousand people or $1,600 has been pledged to this as of this point. Uh, across the country, transgender people held within prison industrial complex face a litany of deprivations. Trans people are incarcerated at more than twice the rate of the general population. <laughs> more than that for trans people of color. <laughs> <laughs> for many trans women in Christ rated here in Georgia, like myself, the most significant deprimation is that of medical and mental health care. Uh, <laughs> so the story is, is that Christina Alicia Lynch was arrested by the man for doing sex work. And as we all know, sex work is work. So it's total bullshit that Christina Alicia Lynch would be arrested for doing a job like any other person would be doing a job. However, someone very astute noticed that they are sentenced to prison for three years. Uh, but yet, the maximum sentence possible for prostitution in Georgia is one year. And one year is less than three years. So what is happening what is the story is falling apart at the seams what could it be that christina alicia lynch was actually convicted of if not prostitution and the answer is uh sex trafficking of a child uh pimping a minor under 18 douglas county 20 years uh pandering by compulsion 10 years Sex exploitation child 10 years sex exploitation child 10 years attempted armed robbery 10 years so they're just now getting out after being convicted uh, years and years ago. Because as it says, 14 years for drag queen pimp. Uh, a drag performer will spend at least the next 14 years in prison after pleading guilty. And this was in 2012. After pleading guilty Wednesday to pimping out and sexually manipulating a 16-year-old in Douglasville. Christopher Lynch, who performed as Passion Nicole, pleaded guilty in the two counts of sexual exploitation of a child, one count of pimping out a victim under the age of 18, and one count of pandering by compulsion. A judge sentenced to a 30-year-old to a 30-year sentence with at least 14 years behind bars. Um, 
They asked for more. They wanted less. And then I was wrong. A tearful lunch set in court on Wednesday. Uh, both men were arrested in early March 2011 after an investigation found in January that found adult and minor victims in Georgia, Alabama, and South Carolina over two to three years. Oh, they investigated for two to three years. Um, both have been held without bond since then. So they worked as a go-go dancer. Uh, Lynch and his boyfriend lived in Lemery's house in the 3600 block of Long Lake Drive near Stewart Mill in the Chapel Hill Roads. Also living there was Lemery's wife and children, the wife's boyfriend, and various victims of sex trafficking, Project Q said. One of those victims, Project Q said, was a transgender 16-year-old boy who was forced to live in a closet, was pimped out several times a day, and was addicted to crack. <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, Ackley said she was pleased to get ju justice without forcing the teen victim to relive those experiences during trial, Douglas County Sentinel said. So there you go. Um, free your mind and the rest will follow. Prison bars can't contain my hopes and dreams. 2023 is waiting on me. And uh, finally, on my period, because even being a weirdo trainee sex trafficker behind bars cannot stop the AGP fetishism. And this is a tranche aspirant. I, I wish them luck um, being added to the roster, though, due to budget cuts, because the alpacas keep fucking dying. Uh, they may not have any space. They may all be starved to death or shot by fascists by 2023. But if not, there is a chance for a part two to the stream where we look at the, the mishaps of this wonderful place and the people living there. So with that said, um, I, I apologize if you're a big fan of the trance and Kevin and I missed something glaring, which should totally I should have covered. Um, that pa that thread is 1,000 pages long. I've tried my best to digest as much as possible um, in the time that I had to prepare for the stream. Uh, I think I've covered it. If you're interested in uh, Ms. Gibbs, the trans salamander, you are, of course, free to read the forum thread. It is uh, open to the public. And I think that is all I'm about to, oh jeez, I'm about to uh, die of dehydration, so I'm sure you can hear it in my voice. <laughs> uh, okay, I think that's all. Matt at the internet.com, kiwifarms.cc, it's better than Twitter, we're going to get a new server for it in a bit, and when we get the new server for it, uh, we're also going to update the Matrix server so that hopefully we can have more people and we can have a, a fun Sneed court again. Uh, buy Bitcoin and see you on Friday. Bye-bye. Don't go in there. You'll become one. Freaky creatures, monster party. Eyes of yellow, scales and feathers, tails and tethers. Turn the lights off. Bend the nightmare. You control it. Artful dodger. Easy does it. Shut the closet. Get under the covers, snakes and lovers, turn the lights off. Everybody likes to get taken to turn. the kinky everybody complicated man and woman baby child calm and wild turn the lights off don't remember what we look like young girl holding one another paper colors dangle streaming dangle screaming turn the lights off
lights off Dance in darkness, blow the nights off Sleepy child, spark desire Walk the fire, 